the first class of assumptions we'll make is that our structural equations are linear with non-Gaussian noise. So recall that we cannot hope to identify the graph more precisely than its Markov equivalent class in the linear Gaussian noise setting. But that setting seemed oddly specific. What if the noise is non-Gaussian, for example? So by the linear non-Gaussian noise assumption, I mean that all structural equations, causal mechanisms that generate the data, are of the following form, where y is generated as a linear function of x, so a linear function, plus some noise term u, where x and u are independent, and importantly, u is distributed as some non-Gaussian. So if u were Gaussian here, we have this impossibility result that we can only do as well as the Markov equivalence class. But if u is non-Gaussian, we're going to be able to exactly identify the graph. That's what this theorem from Shimizu et al. 2016 states. So it's saying that in the linear non-Gaussian setting, if the true SCM is this one where y is generated from x, then there does not exist an SCM in the reverse direction where x is generated from y, where y and this u tilde are independent. So there doesn't exist such an SCM in the reverse direction that can generate the data consistent with the observational distribution. Of course, there exists an SCM in the true direction that can generate data consistent with the observational distribution, but in the linear non-Gaussian setting, there doesn't exist an SCM in the reverse direction for generating that observational distribution. Because there doesn't exist an SCM in the reverse direction, we are able to identify the direction of this edge. We won't cover the proof in this lecture, but you can see the proof in the course book. Okay, so that's the result, but what's something that you can use to help remember this? Uh, so give you some intuition for why we have this result. Turns out it's going to be having a lot to do with these independencies here. So the input variable being independent from the noise. And then here, we're going to have that the input variable is not going to be independent from the noise in the reverse direction. Okay, so that's what we'll see here. So say that we have some data and we're going to regress y on x. So we're going to fit a linear regression to these data points and get this line. And we'll say that this is the correct causal direction. In other words, y is generated from x. When we do the linear regression in this causal direction, we get this nice line that seems to fit the data pretty well. But when you do the regression in the anti-causal direction, when the noise term is non-Gaussian, you don't get such a nice line. You actually get something that looks like this. Okay, so this line doesn't quite look right. It doesn't look like this line where we do the regression in the causal direction, but in the anti-causal direction, we get this line. And this happens only because the noise term is non-Gaussian. If the noise term were Gaussian, we wouldn't have this. Okay, so something seems off here, but to get a bit more clarity on this, we have to look at the residuals. So by looking at the residuals, that's where we subtract our prediction here. So this is our prediction. If we were to fit this function using linear regression, if we were to subtract our prediction from the true value, right? So it's just like moving this to the other side. Then we isolate the residual. Same thing in the causal direction we would be fitting this function, and so our track that to the other side, we'd be trying to estimate this residual. So we're going to look at the residual plots to kind of get plots of this u and this tilde u here. So this is what our residual plot looks like when we do the linear regression in the causal direction, regressing y on x. In this plot, we have the residuals on the y-axis, which is like an estimate of u. And we have x on the x-axis. So we're kind of trying to see if x is independent of u. And it looks pretty independent of u here. 
But then when we look at the regression in the anti-causal direction, now here we're regressing x on y, and now on the y-axis we have this u tilde. And on the x-axis we have y now, because we want to be matching this sort of input variable. Now we see that y is dependent on u tilde. Okay, so this looks pretty independent, right? So the distribution of the residual u here doesn't seem to be changing as we condition on different values of x. So they're independent. But then here, this distribution of u, so it's pretty thin here when we condition on values of y over here, gets a bit wider as we condition on values of y over here, the distribution is getting wider. Okay, and then it thins out again. So clearly the support is changing as we change y. So u tilde absolutely depends on y. And this is the anti-causal SCM, right? We are trying to fit an SCM in the anti-causal direction, but we didn't get one, right? Because we needed y to be independent of the noise term in the anti-causal direction, but it's clearly not. You can check out the proof in the book if you want to see kind of the technical stuff going on for how to prove this, but hopefully this gives you some good intuition and helps you remember this. There are several extensions to this linear non-Gaussian identifiability result and method. So what we're looking at was just for two variables, x and y, but you can extend it to multiple variables, so this multivariate setting. And if you want to drop some assumptions, you can drop the causal sufficiency assumption. That's what they work on in this paper. Or drop the acyclicity assumption. That's what they work on in this paper.